Hey, it's Norm from Tesla.com. I'm here in Austin, Texas for South by Southwest, but it turns out that there are Tesla coils here. I'm in the warehouse of Architect. You might have heard of them. They're the band that plays with Tesla coils. This is Joe DePrima. You're one of the founder, founding members of Architect. You guys make Tesla coils for fun. Yeah, pretty much. Wow, you guys have been doing it for almost 10 years now. Yep, since 2005. We're in front of one of your giant Tesla coils that you guys make. You guys take us on tour. Mm -hmm. So basically, how does a Tesla coil work? What are these components? Yeah, okay, so the gist of a Tesla coil is we're taking uh, you know, energy from the wall and we're taking a low voltage and we're stepping it up with a transformer to a really high voltage. It's the reverse of what a tr normal transformer would do. Well, a, a transformer line. can go either way. Right. It'll either step down voltage or step it up. And these step it up. Uh, what makes a Tesla coil what it is specifically is this coil right here. This is the secondary coil, and the reason why it's special is because it's a tuned circuit. So that means that every time we put energy into it at its resonant frequency, uh, the voltage at the top load becomes higher and higher and higher until eventually uh, it gets so high that it just wants to jump right out of the toroid through our breakout point. And so these Tesla coils are a little bit special. They're not like the Tesla coils that Tesla himself used to make. And the reason for that is that they use solid state parts. Okay. So like transistors and yep. components and things that weren't around in his day. And so this machine is more similar to what we would know now as a switch mode power supply or sort of like a motor controller. So down here in this box, you see we have DC voltage that comes in from our power supply and uh, we have a bank of transistors in here and we also have a, a bank of capacitors that's hooked in series with this primary coil right here. And so basically what we're doing is we're using those transistors to switch the current across this tank circuit and we're creating a really uh, high voltage on this primary and we're transferring energy into the secondary coil at its resonant frequency. All right, Joe, uh, the primary coil and secondary coil, how are they connected? How do they interact? Yeah, so they're actually not connected. So what we're doing here is we're creating a current on this primary coil, which ends up creating magnetic flux, and that magnetic flux ends up getting coupled to the secondary, just like a standard transformer. And then in terms of scale, what's different between a small Tesla coil and a bigger one? And, and how do you get to a big size Tesla coil? Yes, yeah, so I'd say that the key difference, and there's, there's a lot of little differences, but the key difference is the size of the silicon that you need to make a big Tesla the coil. The solid state. Yeah, a big solid state coil. And so a big solid state coil like this uses a transistor. That's a transistor? That, that looks like that, yeah. See, it's about the size of your fist, probably a little bit heavier. Wow. A small Tesla coil will use a transistor. Sort yeah, that of looks like a little that. more familiar like yeah. on the circuit board. Yeah, exactly. And so, you know, there's some differences in the electronics that you need to drive something this large. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, that's mainly it. One of these guys costs about $400. And you have several yeah. of those yeah. in this bank right here. Yeah, and one of these guys right here is probably $8. So, so you can make one at home. Yeah, you can make one at home. All right, so electricity goes up. It's high voltage, very high frequency as well. Yeah, this thing oscillates at about 40 kilohertz. All right. Yep. And then once it gets to the top, what happens? So the top load right here is a capacitor. And so basically it uh, changes the resonant frequency of the secondary coil, and it also helps us store more energy. Mm. And so uh, that's one of the interesting things uh, about Tesla coils. The reason why you don't see them everywhere is because they're notorious for interfering with uh, nearby electronic equipment. So right. if you install it on a stage, it can make your lights blink, and it can make your mixing consoles crackle. And so the reason why a Tesla coil interferes with other electronics is because of this top load up here. And so this is a capacitor. It's about 40 picofarads, right, which is not a lot of capacitance. But if you consider that we're charging it up to a half a million volts, mm -hmm. it's holding a whole lot of energy. Yeah. And so when the arc arcs out of the toroid and it strikes a ground point, what happens is the energy in this top load and top load capacitance discharges through the arc and it creates a really, really high current uh, surge and it makes a huge burst of EMI and it rings the ground lines and stuff like that. Right. And so that's why we developed this piece right here. And so what this piece is, is it's basically just an inductor. And so we're using it as a reactor. So essentially what it's doing is it's slowing down the rate that the energy is allowed to discharge out of the top load. And so when the Tesla coil strikes to a grounded object, the mm -hmm. current doesn't peak nearly as high. And so that's eliminated most of the issues. All right, and so we have this fence here, and, and we're standing on wire. What does a Tesla coil discharge to, and what is the effect? For one thing, a Tesla coil doesn't have to strike any particular object. Like, mm -hmm. the arcs themselves will just couple to the environment. Okay. Right, and that's why we set up all this ground mesh. Like, if you look on the ground, we have this window screen here. Yeah. By setting up this ground mesh, we can ensure that the arcs couple and return back into the coil instead of going into random places that we don't want them to go. 
And so uh, with this fence sitting right here, if we turn this Tesla coil on all the way, the arc would just come out and it would just strike right to that fence. So what, a, what is it about a modern Tesla coil that allows it to play different notes? It's because we have so much control over the oscillation with the logic chips. Like inside this box down here, we actually have a microcontroller, right? And so we're actually sending MIDI data over this fiber optic cable mm -hmm. straight to that microcontroller. And that microcontroller interfaces with a bunch of logic devices that can tell the Tesla coil to start oscillating or to stop oscillating. And so the way that we actually produce a pitch with the coil is that if we just let it oscillate at its resonant frequency, it's about 40 kilohertz, which okay. is way too high to hear. Right, so what we do is we operate it in a burst. So we'll turn it on for, you know, say two or 300 microseconds, and the secondary will go through maybe like 15 or 16 cycles, and we'll shut it off. And when we do that, the Tesla coil makes an arc, and it sounds like a pop, right? So if we want to play a note, say at 440 hertz, which is an A, what we would do is we would let it go through that process 440 times a second. So we're creating 440 of these bursts a second, mm -hmm. thus creating 440 pops a second, and then your ears perceive it as a pitch. So you work with a team of people not only build these Tesla coils, but also to play music and want to talk to you, yeah. some of your guys to see how this actually operates. Sure, yeah. And so we have uh, Sam McFadden, who is our safety operator. He operates our power supplies at shows, and he also is the one that hits the button if anything goes wrong. And then we- Best job in the world. Yeah, and we have my brother John here, who is our audio engineer, and he composes a bunch of our music and just gets our show ready to go. All right, let's talk to Sam. All right. All right, so I'm here with Sam McFadden. You're part of Arc Attack. You run the, the big switch, yes. flipping it on. But I want to talk about power. So okay. where, does, where do these Tesla coils plug into the wall? Okay, so to power these Tesla coils, what we use is we actually use uh, 208 three phase. Okay. Uh, so that's quite a bit of power. But then what we do is we take it, we stick it into this bottom box down here, and what's down here is a big giant contactor that is actuated by this emergency stop switch. And then it goes into a big three phase filter, and then the top box here actually is our power supply. Got and it. what it does is it takes that 208 three phase, it rectifies it into DC, and then it boosts it anywhere from 300 to 600 volts, depending on our environment, how, how loud we want the coils to be. Yeah. And then it also power factor corrects our power too, allowing us to pull the maximum amount of power from the wall. From the wall, because when you're AC, it's, it's, it's going through Correct. a cycle. And as you were describing me earlier, you're trying to pull as much power from all, all points of that cycle as, as opposed to just the peaks. It, correct, exactly. And so it's the 600 volts, and then that gets piped to those coils, and then that gets amped up to a, yes, absolutely. half a million. Correct. All right, so what's your role in, in setting that up and activating these? Well, my role in setting it up is I usually uh, wire up all the power and get it all uh, set up with the coils. And then during the show, I uh, number one, I am uh, make sure safety. Safety is very important with mm -hmm. us. We have never had a safety incident, and we plan on never having one. Um, and then second, I uh, operate the coils, charge them up, make sure that they're ready to go whenever a song is about to be played, and then I make sure to turn them off and discharge the coils, because we have a very, very large bank of capacitors filter caps for our H-bridge, mm -hmm. and so we want to be able to make sure we drain all of that energy before we let anybody approach the Tesla coils. And it seems pretty seamless, but behind the scenes, yeah. you're actually you're managing that power yes. pretty carefully. Yeah, absolutely. So Sam, back at the warehouse, you actually make the coils, you coil that copper yourself. What's that process like? Okay, well, uh, so I use a jig, which is actually up there on the wall, or on the shelves right there, um, and all it is is we take the piece of PVC pipe or whatever we're using as our form to wind the coil. And uh, we rotate that around at a speed that I set. And uh, then we wrap the wire around the coil, but it's all about the technique and how you do it. And this is something that's taken a long time to learn and figure out exactly the best way to do it. Mm -hmm. But the best way to do it is to have the wire really far away at a very slight angle and then just turn up the motor slowly and just let the wire just wind itself right up on the pipe and it's usually it really, really neat and real clean and it happens uniform. real fast. And what happens if it's not uniform? Does that affect the, the performance and the operation? Uh, yeah, well we want everything to be uh, as close as, as possible because we usually make things in pairs mm -hmm. and so we want everything to operate and be in tune and we and parts are swappable so everything needs to be very symmetrical. So it doesn't matter what that cent central form is made of like how important are the materials here? 
Uh, the materials are very important. Uh, we usually just do it by experimentation and making sure that things work and testing and testing, doing lots and lots of testing. But generally things that are non-conductive, like a PVC yeah. pipe, acrylic, plastics are really good. Uh, wood, not so much because it can absorb water. Even plastics can absorb water, so you need to make sure that your plastics are very dry before you wind them and then seal them with epoxy. All right, Sam, thanks a lot. Uh, we're going to talk to John, who's going to give us a little information about how you guys make this play music. John, when you guys go on stage and play music, how is that music played? Oh, it's, it's fairly complicated. Um, first off, we use MIDI as the basis of all of our signals. We don't use standard MIDI equipment. We actually had to build some custom stuff to get it work around the coils. So my brother said before, uh, they can cause interference over mm -hmm pretty much any type of electronics, so we try to minimize that as much as possible. And we did that by building this guy right here, which is a custom-made show controller box. And how this works is I compose the music on my computer and copy it to a little SD card with, the, uh, with a MIDI file and a couple of audio tracks that sync up with it. We load it onto the SD card here, and then we can control it from a computer. And what's handy about that is this box and the computer don't have to be anywhere near each right. other. So we can keep the computer far away from the Tesla coils, or we can keep this far away from the Tesla coils, and it really just depends on the situation that we're in. So what's, what do you, when you compose the music, what's that composition process like? Are you just making any, any MIDI file? Um, well, we can take any MIDI file and edit it a little bit to make it work on the coils, but uh, one of the main things about our show is you know, we're a visual thing too, yeah. so not only do we have to compose stuff that sounds cool, but it has to look cool too. So I made a program on my computer that simulates how the coils work as ah, I'm composing. Okay. So it's also very dangerous to be composing while these things are <laughs> yeah. on and it's bad for your ears. So uh, it's basically just a little program that sounds just like the Tesla coils and shows when it's sparking or not. So I can make pretty neat patterns, fade back and forth and whatnot. Uh, another thing too is they're, uh, they're loud and they kind of sound like heavily distorted trumpets. which is a very odd instrument to have to write uh, music for. So it's a lot of just tweaking it to get it to not sound as abrasive with the backing tracks. And um, you know, we also play guitar and drums along with it too to kind of fill it in a bit more. We, we pretty much treat the Tesla coils as the lead singer of our band. Right, you guys designed it as a musical instrument. So is yeah. there a background in music coming into here? Uh, my background was actually in uh, acoustical engineering, but Joe and I have actually been playing in bands ever since we were about 13 or 14 years old. So that, that was my first passion was this. And uh, Joe was living in Texas, I was living in Chicago, and he calls me up, he's like, hey, I got this thing, it's, it's a Tesla coil, but it plays music. And I'm like, okay, I'm moving down there and we're starting a band. <laughs> that sounds awesome. And it looks like you guys have a ton of fun. You guys do other stuff for fun also with oh, the yeah, Tesla coils, totally, right? totally, yeah. Nice. Um, we've, we've done some pretty odd stuff with it. Like We had one gig where we tried to cook meat for a Japanese reality TV show. Nice. Um, it did not work out very well. It's not very efficient. So. Building robots? Yeah, we also build robots too. Uh, I, I want to point out that actually I used to be the drummer of the band, uh, but I got replaced by our robot back here, which is pretty cool still. I mean, getting replaced by a robot, there's worse ways to lose your job. Let's take a look at some of the fun stuff you do. Cool. Three, two, one. All right, that was pretty amazing. What did you guys just do to that piece of foil? So what you just saw was a piece of aluminum foil being turned into plasma. And so the way that we did that is we have this box down here that has a gigantic capacitor inside of it, probably one of the biggest capacitors you can find on the face of the planet. And we just dumped a whole bunch of current through those electrodes and mm -hmm. we just completely obliterated that foil just like a fuse. How much power are we talking about going through that? So that was probably about 10,000 amps. Wow. So this is something you guys built uh, to take around to educate kids about yep. electricity we and, and circuits. and. And power. Yeah, we call it our cool electromagnetic demonstration machine. <laughs> so basically it has three demos it can do. So we just saw a blow up a uh, piece of aluminum foil. The next thing that we're going to show you is how we can turn this piece of aluminum into a magnet. All right. And so basically, you know, if you take a magnet and try to stick it to that ring, it's just going to fall yep. right off. Nothing's going to happen. So what we have to do is we have to turn it into an electromagnet. So what we have right here is we have a coil of wire and we're gonna set the ring on top of the coil of wire. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when Sam hits the switch, he's gonna put an electric current through that coil, right? And it's gonna create, uh, it's going to induce an electric current in this ring. And so what we're gonna end up with is two electromagnets that wanna get away from each other. So you ready to see this work? Yeah, absolutely. Three, two, one. So what you just saw was a fraction of the energy that this machine uh, can put out. If we charge this thing all the way up, it would easily put a hole through the ceiling. Wow. 
and uh, we've learned that from experience. And so the next demo that we're going to do for you, we can show you how strong a magnetic field can really be. Yeah. So what we have here is a Lone Star can, the official beer of Texas, mm -hmm. and we're going to insert it inside of this coil of wires. It's aluminum, just like that ring. Yep. So instead of being on top of the coil, it's inside. And so we're going to zap that can with the biggest magnetic field that this machine can produce. And All I think right. you're going to like what happens. And this one's going to be pretty loud, so you might want to cover your ears. Three, two, one. So what happened to this can here? So basically how the ring wanted to get away from that coil right there, the same thing happened here. We turned the can into an electromagnet, but since it was inside of the coil, it didn't have anywhere to go but mm -hmm. in. So the magnetic field just sheared it right in half and just explosively sent it flying in two different directions. Very cool. All right, I got one more question. With these Tesla coils, how close can I get to the coil? Oh, I think we can work something out. All right, let's go give it a try. Right. All right, so I was told to stand here, and I was told it's perfectly safe. This, there's a fence here, and they're gonna shoot some bolts of electricity at me. Come at me, bro. That's not so bad. Oh my God! Wow, that's incredible. Thank you to Architect. Thank you, Joe Sanderson, for bringing us in their warehouse to show us how Tesla coils work, go check them out at architect.com and you can subscribe to our YouTube channel here on Tesla.com. I'm Norm. I don't know if I'll live through this, but I'll see you next time.